Hello chess lovers, Sonan here and in this video I want to take a quick look at an attacking game played by legendary American chess player Robert James Fisher. Fisher's opponent is a little known chess player Manuel Vister and this game is from Fisher's 1967 Manila Simul. Fisher is on the white side and he opened up with e4 to switch, Vister answered with c6, Karokan defense is on the board. But after Fischer's second move d3, which gives rise to Breyer variation, instead of answering with a standard d5 move, Black chose a passive looking d6 move uh, and then chose a setup which is common to Pierce's defense. A passive but a solid opening where Black is allowing White to occupy the center. Uh, and then is trying to undermine it. Here Fischer castled king side, queen b6 check, king h1 and knight g4. Already black is threatening a smothered mate, that's why Fischer blocked the g1 a7 diagonal, knight d f6, knight c3, h5 h3, knight h6. Uh, up to this point black was playing very aggressively and let me tell you that in here playing h4 is something which is worth of taking into consideration. White has to be very careful when defending. But instead in the game after h3 we have knight h6 answer, after which we can already say that black's attack is neutralized and now the initiative is on white side, d takes e5, after this move already serious problems are appearing in black's camp, better was moving the knight on g8. Instead we see d takes e5 and f takes e5, white managed to open up the f file for the rook, knight a4, queen c7 and white knight is also occupying an attacking square. Finally on move 16 black is castling but already it's too late, white's pressure is unbearable, e6 is now the threat. Of course black can neutralize that threat with e6 but in this case black is like burying the uh, bishop on d7 and yeah, even in this case still white is maintaining a huge advantage. Although let me tell you that this is something which is better than uh, bishop f5. e6 appeared on the board, queen b7 and e takes f7, knight f6. Uh, in case of knight takes f7, white can just go for an exchange on f5 and then can play knight e6. In our game after e takes f7 we see knight f6 and knight takes h6, uh, white is removing black knight which at any moment was ready to win the pawn on the 7th rank. Queen e2, uh, white queen is coming to harass black king, queen takes b2 check, knight d7 and at this point you can give a try to find Fischer's next moves. Uh, ready? Uh, in here Fischer went for an exchange on d7 after which played queen takes h6. Did you manage to find this move? In case of rook takes h6 uh, pawn promotion is winning. You are also winning black rook. In the game we see rook dd8 so white just won a piece right also this pawn is a menace for black's security, victory is just a matter of moves. Rook a b1, queen c3, rook takes f5. Whatever you play is winning, but at this point rook takes b7 is the strongest move. Really a nice move, right? Uh, in the game we see rook takes f5 and after queen takes d4, white played bishop takes c6 and resignation followed. Although you can just go for f8 queen straight away, right? Yeah, but Fischer's bishop takes c6 is very beautiful. If b takes c6, then queen takes c6, check, and then f8 queen, yeah. Uh, that's why this point on move 29 we see a resignation. So this is it dear chess lovers, hope that you enjoyed this beautiful attacking game by Robert James Fischer. And in the end, let's also solve a simple chess puzzle where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.